This is Matt for Into Boxing. I'd like to be joined by the one and only Mr. Fabio Wardley. Fabio, pleasure to have you on. How's things? Good, 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 good. How's things with you, mate? How's everything going? Yeah, can't complain. Full time job now, so all good. Good. Living the life, mate. Living the dream. Yeah, can't can't complain at all. Um, I saw you on Saturday night. You were doing you doing a bit of commentary. How'd you find that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that no, was brilliant. It was good. Trying my hand at something new. Um, the commentary thing is something I've wanted to do for a while. To be fair, I like I like doing that. I like we need like everyone's a kind of a commentator when they're sat at home watching boxing, aren't they? They've all got their own bits to say. So it's nice to be able to do it in front of the ring. It's a little bit of pressure and stuff, but it's nice. I really enjoyed it. So hopefully I've, I've got a lot more coming up of those. Do you find yourself having to, like, rein yourself in a bit? So, so when you're at home, when you're in the stands, you can obviously like, say what you want and be a bit more uh, emotional. Do you find yourself having to be, like, really concentrated? Yeah, sure a little bit. Not, not so much that. because I'm... Um, particularly worried about like my opinion or what people might say or something. I know I'm like, I'll probably swear or something like that, or I'll say like the wrong thing. I'll be rude about it or just be a bit like kind of direct and not particularly, I'm not always the, I'm not always the most, the best one to kind of sugarcoat something if I like have an opinion towards it. So sometimes that's not the right setting for that, but I think I managed to do it all right anyways. I didn't swear at least. So I'm, I'm taking that off as a win at least. Yeah, absolutely. Chalk that one off as a job well done, I suppose. Um, let's get into that main event. Um, one of the best fights I've seen live, heavyweight fights, and to be that close to the action, hear the punches. I mean, I don't know how yeah. Devin was still standing after one flurry that Parker did, because incredible. Um, give me your opinion, your reaction to that fight. Yeah, exactly the same, mate. Exactly the same. I was thinking exactly the same. Probably about halfway through, I was going... This one of the best fights I've ever seen. Like live, definitely one of the best fights I've ever seen. It was unreal. Not just that as well, the atmosphere. I can't remember what it was. It was after like round three or four. The place absolutely went nuts. It was after Derek did his thing where he stood in um, Parker's face and just screamed at him. And the place just literally, I could, like, you could actually feel the vibrations of like everyone cheering and roaring as well. It was just mental. It's just that's one of those real big, memorable kind of boxing nights. I think um, before the fight got made, there was a lot of, as with every fight that gets made, a lot of negativity and oh, why do why do we have to see this rematch kind of thing? And you know, Derek Chisora always you know brings the action no matter what, and that's why he stays in the main events even after like double figure losses. You know, the record. Ooh. You know, when you look at who he's lost to, you know, high level opponents. So. With Joe's new style as well, I was saying to a few people, I said, you need to watch this because he's going to come completely differently and it'll make for a better fight. How impressed were you with um, with Joseph Parker and what looks like Andy Lee's implemented him a really strong sort of come forward style now? Yeah, good. Really good. He made some, it seems like he's made some nice adjustments, obviously under, under Andy Lee, under Andy Lee's guidance giving him point is what to do and, and how to kind of carry himself, especially with that new bulk of weight as well. I think and Andy pounds. even said yeah. that um, it's not necessarily something they actually planned for, aimed to do. I think I heard that this just kind of how it worked out, that they, they've they they've adjusted his training routine and that he, going into this, he just became heavier and they've just kind of accepted that and worked with it. But it seemed to pay dividends for him. What do you, what do you make of his... Um performance as a whole when you look at the fact that he's been in there with Anthony Joshua who went in there with obviously Dillian White we saw I think we saw spells in the Dillian fight towards the end of him being a bit more I don't want to say brave because all boxers are brave but more aggressive and having more spite but in this fight from round one he tried to control centre ring you know centre ring and almost try and push Chisora back do you think the fight say with Joshua for example that that fight would look completely different if he implemented this style against him now? Um, not completely different, maybe not, but um, I, do, I definitely think he would have a better go of it. Definitely think he'd have a better go of it. He was quite standoffish in that Joshua fight. Um, yeah. And he had, he had long moments of that as well, like I say, in the, in the Dylan White fight as well. Um, and there was even a few moments of that in the, the first Chisora fight as well. So it's, it's nice to see that, like, like we said before, Andy Lee putting that extra bit in him, giving them their extra kind of extra few gears and extra bit of confidence in his own work to say, actually, no, like get, get involved and get stuck in. And, and especially for someone like Chisora, that's the game plan you need to implement. You need to 
impose yourself. You need to make sure you've got your stamp on the fight and not let him run away with the momentum because he is very much a momentum-based fighter that if he gets a buzz, if he gets a G up, he feels like he's getting ahead. Mm-hmm. You're, you're just sitting, you're, it's just a ball rolling down the hill and it's just getting worse and worse for you. So you need to kind of put a lid on that as early as possible. I think I heard, I can't remember who said it now, but someone said he's almost in like a who needs him club. You've got, the titles look like they're sort of going to be wrapped up between Tyson and Dillian and Usyk and Joshua. So he's almost in a position now of, you know, high risk and is the reward kind of worth it for him? What would you like to see him do as in fight next? There's loads of opponents. Obviously, Wilder said, you know, I think he's a bit unsure on whether he will carry on or not. You've got Andy Ruiz Jr. That would be a good rematch, I suppose. You know, it would be a great rematch. What would you like to see him do? And how do you think he gets on against the likes of a Wilder or a, a Ruiz? Yeah, he needs to, he needs to stay, that, stay competing at that top, top level. Um, although he is in that kind of who needs him category, he's not in that category alone. There's a lot of people in there. But like you say, there's, there's Joseph Parker, there's Wilder, there's Ruiz. Joyce. There's Joe Joyce. Yeah, Joe Joyce, there's Hergovic as well. There's a lot of boys in that all same area that are on the edge of kind of world titles, but obviously they realise everything's going to be locked up for a bit. So for a while, mix it around with them. Just like, just have some good high level fights. We Like Saturday, we saw on Saturday, there was no belt on the line. There was no title or anything, but it was a great night, great night of boxing and, and great for everyone to see. And that's what the fans want. So, and I know it, it's a business as well when everyone's looking for the money fights and stuff, but mm-hmm. it's proven that big fights like that can still generate the money and stuff. So that's where I'd like to see him compete. It's just at that top level still with, I think the most intriguing out of all of those, I think would be the rematch of Andy Ruiz to see how it, how it goes second time around. It'd be interesting for both, wouldn't it? Because Andy Ruiz has had that one fight back where he seemed to have you know, shed loads of weight. Um, I believe he got knocked down in that fight, but he came back up yeah. and won, ended up winning. I think that was Chris Ariola. Um, so it would be interesting to see with Joe's new style. Um, it's a fan-friendly style as well. This, I think, obviously, he's come to the UK before. He's had two showings, but his stock, I was saying to him, you know, um, night after the morning after, his stock will have risen because of how he approached that fight because he didn't just sit back. So fights with Ruiz could be could be huge. Mm, yeah, exactly. That's the thing. He he had two kind of lackluster performances here in the UK, which not necessarily left a sour taste in the mouth, but just a bit. People gave him a bit of a side eye when they saw him kind of fight over here and again. And then, obviously, even with the Chisora fight the first time around, they didn't particularly light up the building. It wasn't a, it wasn't a like, bad fight, but it wasn't crazy either. That's why no one was too excited for the rematch, but it came around. It was a great fight. So Joe showed off that new style, which he can put into new, new fights and, and have some good goes at it. Let's go on to Derek Chisora because um, I've... Apart from Fury getting up from Wilder in LA, I've never seen anything like that in terms of somebody taking punishment and almost using their head sometimes as a defence to walk straight forward and, you know, try and land shots of their own. Incredible, like, courage and bravery from him. Um, What a tough human being. I think I was was wincing at one point and I think his eyes almost rolled and then the referee sort of half said to him, Come on, and then he starts throwing again. Crazy. What? Yeah. He's a perfect example of someone with a lot of losses on the record, but if you can prove you're entertaining and give value for money, you still can perform at that top level. Um, is it a case now of just, you know, he's, he's took a lot of punishment. Do you think he will be able to carry on fighting at sort of that level with the likes of your Parkers, or do you think he'll, you know, drop down a level? What What do you think will happen with sort of his career? Uh, he'll stay, he'll stay at that level. Yeah. I think I think he'll stay at that level. I don't think, well, for one, I don't think he would box at a lower level. I, I think, like we've said before, he's a momentum fighter. He has to be G'd up for the fight. He has to think it's of interest. He has to mm-hmm. want it. He has to make it in his own head, build up some, not necessarily a, a story or whatever, but it has to be intriguing to him, interesting. Otherwise, you've seen early in his, earlier, sorry, in his career, performances where he's not been particularly great because he hasn't been that interested in the fight hasn't been enjoyable for whatever reason so he only he gets g'd up for these big nights those big events big atmospheres so he's going to always need them so he'll still always be in the mix I think like you said he's a prime example of the fans dictate the sport 
but they always have done, they always will, is that it doesn't matter how many losses you've got on your record. If you're a good character and you're entertaining in the ring, the fans are always going to tune in to watch you. So I think he'll always have a place in kind of boxing. Absolutely. We mentioned the other names, obviously, the who needs my club kind of thing with your Hergovic's and Andy Ruiz, Wilders. Um, if he carries on boxing at that level, what do you think his chances are if you put him in with a Ruiz or a, or a puncher like Wilder? May not be favourite, but do you see them fights as competitive for him if he does take on something like that? Yeah, of course. He's never, never in his life will it be an easy night's work for someone. Never, never. Not with that kind of style, not with that kind of punch resistance, that kind of heart. There's just no way. There's, there's no way on earth that he'd ever be just an easy roll over night's work for someone. He's always going to bring it and who's, who's going to put it on you. So there's always going to be a place for him to compete in that in that level with them, them good fights. It's just that they can get made. What about yourself then? Obviously, you look at someone like Chisora who's had that, um, he's had a great run of fights. He's got himself now sort of the last five or six fights in incredible shape. Um, so the fights are always good, win, lose, draw or whatever. Um, you're sort of on your way up. Do you think there'll ever be a point where you'll be at that level where you can you two could potentially meet? You know, and after watching that... Yeah, there's, yeah, yeah I know, I know what you mean. There's always that possibility yeah. of like a crossover point of where he's mm -hmm. on his last few days of it and I'm now wanting to step into that level. So, it, like, there's always the age old. He's a gatekeeper for, for that kind of level or whatever. So there is always a possibility. There's always that chance, especially because I'm, I'm going to move into that kind of level, them, them levels of my career, and he's obviously going to be at the back end. So there's never, it's never say never with that. We're looking at um, the possibility now of Dillian and Tyson, finally, mm -hmm. um, him fighting for a WBC belt. Um, we've spoke about this, I think, throughout lockdown, only because you know, we don't know what's happening, and this situation just keeps rolling on and on and on and on. So, theoretically, that fight gets made. How does, how does it play out? What's, what's, obviously, Tyson's going into this as, clear, as the bookie's favourite. You know, there's, no, there's no denying that. That's, that's everywhere. Mm -hmm. But... How does Dillian get to Tyson and manage to beat him to take the belt? Um, I think one, well, I think Dill out of the heavyweights crop at the moment. He's one of the the kind of he's one of the prime people who are built to fight. He's one. He's got probably got one of the biggest chances against Fury. I was speaking to someone about this earlier today, saying that the thing is with Fury, you need to stick it on him and not let him box. The the issues that obviously Wilder and stuff have had with the He's not a boxer. He's a puncher. He, mm -hmm. But even still, he had no he had no other fundamentals to even edge his way into that. He couldn't really do it. And I think if someone like Joshua fights Fury, he's going to try and box him again, like we like we saw he did with Usyk, and that went a bit south and didn't work. Whereas someone to me like Dylan, who will just stick it on you, will make it uncomfortable. He'll be in front of you, be on your chest, swinging hooks into your ribs and looping big ones over the top, and just. Closing that gap and making it just an un, une, uneven, awkward, just uncomfortable fight where where Fury sits in that comfy place of boxing at range, nice long arms, lots of head movement, bouncing and moving. He needs to close that gap and keep it on him and just keep it a rough and ready kind of fight. How do you think Tyson, obviously theoretically, isn't it, but how do you think he'd approach someone like Dillian? Because I assume, assuming, you know, Dillian's, although he can do, he's not going to be wanting to chase him around if he decides to just box and move. But with this Kronk style, we don't see Fury doing as much moving. He tends to plant his feet and, you know, his punches, uh, he's punching with, um, with spite every time now. Whereas before, I think he was all quite a back, not a, sort of a back foot boxer, although he did have the power to knock you out, but he would sort of, throw a few throwaway jabs here and there and you know now everything's thrown with bad intentions would that be a benefit beneficial to Dillian the fact that if he comes forward and just and wants to tear it with him yeah I think because Dill's Dill's a massive counter puncher he's he's happy for you to let because the thing is with Fury early on when he was picking and moving he wasn't putting much into those shots he wasn't throwing his body into him wasn't putting his like shoulders he's twisting through them which then leads you forward into your opponent's face so when you are now really throwing that right hand and throwing it down the pipe and stepping through it and stepping into it, you're leaving yourself in a, in a more vulnerable space now, ready for a slip or a counter. Or You've seen Dill pull off that kind of catch left hook 101 times over, yeah. and he can do that through all over the place. So you extend too far with a right hand, miss maybe, slips, 
whatever, I parried, and then Dill comes with the left hook, then that's that's just going to play right into his hands. I think the build-up alone for that fight could be pay-per-view. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. The just talk the, back and forth. Oh my god! I mean, the press conference in itself will be like highlight reels. It could be unbelievable. It'll be an event. It'll be an absolute event. Um, talk to us about you then. I think last time we spoke, you were sort of just recovering um, under orders to sort of not not do anything, but sort of take it a bit easier and taper off for the end of the year to set yourself up for. 2022 so how's things with yourself and when can we expect to see you back when are you aiming for uh i'm good i'm i'm pretty much recovered now pretty much all done um i was in camp with chisora for a couple of weeks doing some sparring and stuff so just oh, to yeah. test my body out make sure it was it was holding on and make how sure was I could get good rounds. <laughs> <laughs> how was that <laughs> yeah good yeah good yeah. Just, throw in, just throw yourself straight in the deep end and see if you can swim, basically. See if you can still hold everything holds together. But that was a good kind of fire test for my body. Make sure everything's still there. Make sure everything still works. Nothing's breaking, falling apart or whatever. And everything held through great. So we've got that kind of checklist done. That's all all right. So it's just looking forward now. But hoping to get out in kind of Feb time, something like that. So get an early start to the year crack on and then just move from there really just whenever the next opportunity is after that get it going obviously the big plan overall is always to aim for that British title but there's obviously some waiting around I need to do for that yeah is that um apologies is that something that will be contested between yourself and potentially Nathan Gorman as time goes on do you think that fight yeah I think that's always been he's always been the most obvious candidate on the other side for that um I can't really think of anyone else that may be of any any note of any worth to be kind of in that contention. It, yeah, whenever those names have been spoken, it has always just been me and him, really, in terms of next for the British title. So that's the plan. Um, but again, it depends on what Joyce is doing with that. I know he's just had his, um, he's just got an injury to his hand, a broken hand, so that'll put him out for however long, which may force him to have to vacate. Um, and then, yeah, it just leaves an open space for me and Nathan. But again, as long as Nathan's ready, he's been out for the ring for a little while now as well I don't think not um, because of injury or anything but he just hasn't fought so he may even want a little warm up beforehand or something I'm not, not too sure yeah I'm sure when I spoke to Nathan I think he's looking to get out quite soon into the new year I um, spoke to him I can't remember if it was about three or four weeks ago I think he's looking to get out of the new year he's signed with Wasserman isn't he? so they'll be get, looking to put on a show with him and get him get him out and get him ready you've sort of taken um so sort a of decent level of opponents when you look at the, like the last few fights now. So there'll be no sort of backward steps, and you see you sparring the likes of Chisora, um, which must have been really interesting considering you know, you know how we how we fought at the weekend. Um, how much are you looking forward to now going up through the levels and challenging for the British, and then making that step up a bit more to you know European fringe world? Is that obviously when you see the atmosphere on Saturday night? Does that give you a buzz to say you know what I'll be I'll be headlining this one day kind of thing? Yeah, that is the thing. Saturday night is like the big thing where you, you stop for a second, you look around, you sit there and go, fuck, like I miss this. Like Even if I haven't even been out for that, like in terms like actually that long, a few months or so, whatever. But without I being in the thick of it, it really feels like ages and it really feels like you haven't been in the ring for years. It feels like you're just sat there on the sidelines waiting and going stale. So, yeah, it definitely, especially I already had it, it never went, but that buzz is definitely just there now where I'm just like, yeah, cool, get me back, get me back to that ring, get me back to them crowds, get me back to them lights. Brilliant. Well, we look forward to seeing how, how your new year comes out and, you know, fingers crossed we'll get another interview done in person at, when your fight gets announced. I think um, it's been an interesting year, there's a lot of big fights to be made and we'll see what happens. You could be on the undercard of White and Firm Fury, couldn't you? Yeah, could do. It's always a possibility. So next year could be a really big year. So that's why I'm looking forward to just getting things going. No worries. Right, Fabio Wadler, thanks for talking to Into Boxing. Uh, it's been a pleasure as always. And yeah, we'll uh, catch up again. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much.